genre. Now I will say right off the bat, war films isn't really my thing. If I hear or see a trailer for a war film, I just ignore it because, you know, I don't want to see that. But I'm going through Nicolas Cage's filmography, all of it, so I have to talk about it at some point, which is why I'm doing it now. I don't want to do it like later on. The first film, Captain Corelli's Mandolin. Not only is it a war film, but it's also a romance film, so two genres that I just don't really care for at all right off the bat. This movie is pretty good. Most of it is the whole romance stuff with Cruz's character. You're just kind of with her along for the ride. She's a doctor because her father's a doctor on this island. War is coming. Throughout her journey, she finds two men that she likes and it is most of that. So when the whole war comes on to the island, you don't expect it. At least I didn't. I'd almost forgotten that it was a war movie. Nicolas Cage is in a war soldier suit and whatnot. This is a war movie. I forgot. Penelope, her character, she's a educated, smart woman. That's how they kind of describe her in this film. Throughout the film, she wants something out of her life essentially, aside from being a doctor. Whenever she meets, you know, Christian Bale's character, she clearly is infatuated with him. They get married and whatnot. And that one scene of her dancing, while at first I thought, this is kind of out there, more I thought about it, it's essentially her just kind of being free. She has like talked with her father about being a doctor or whatnot, and he wants better things for her, not just, you know, her career, but also like a man. And so because of that, being like told what to do, that scene of her dancing, really good dance, by the way, is her just kind of being free, not being restricted. That's how I saw it as, because it is that one moment that I remember the most about her characters. And she's also a very kind of quiet and kind of reserved person. She doesn't really want to be open at all. She doesn't let, you know, anyone in her life that openly until she gets to know that person. They grow closer. Once she does, the person has to go away. It happens twice in this movie with Christian and Bale at first. She's like in love with him, but he has to leave for war. And so she misses him, writes letters, doesn't get back to her. And then same for Nicolas Cage. At first, she's like this soldier. The movie goes on, like him, kind of forgets about Christian Bale's character, but then he comes back. But again, like with Bale, Cage has to leave for reasons of war. And so she's always a person that wants to be happy, but can't be, which is pretty sad and tragic of her character. Yes, she is a doctor. She's helping people of this island, but she herself can't find her own happiness. Nicolas Cage. Now, one thing I do love about him in this film is that his line and appearance in this film is saying fuck off, which will say immediate like, okay, I already love this guy. Love this character. He's here as a soldier. And as the film goes on, he grows closer to Cruz. And, and then it gets to the point where he likes the community. He loves being on the island because the people are very nice. They're very likable people, but he's still at war with Germans and Greeks. I think it is. This is set like 1940s. So I have no idea. I'm not a history buff whatsoever. So I don't know, but it's a war. And during his time on the island, he knows at some point that he's going to have to go back to war, fight war, because that's just the state of the world. They're going against other countries. The governor from The Walking Dead is in this movie. I'm just going to call him the governor because that's all I know him from. He's an interesting type of character because he's barely in it. He is in it for like maybe 10 minutes total, but he's more of a side character. And there's one moment that stands out. It's him trying to kill Nicolas Cage because the higher ups of his army or soldiers, they felt betrayed by the fact that they were working with Greeks, I think, help or whatever, some kind of coordination. And they don't like that. And they're like, nope, it's only us. And that's it. No Greeks. So because of that, most of the soldiers, they get shot and killed. And obviously Nicolas Cage is all there. He's still alive. And the governor, he has a chance to kill him. But what's great about it is that he doesn't have the balls to do it. He's afraid. He clearly doesn't want to be a part of this war, but for some reason he has to be. Instead of, you know, not killing him, he just goes back. He goes back kind of weeping, go back in the car. That guy in the car totally does not notice that he's like weeping and whatnot. But either way, that was a really great moment showing remorse and just kind of regret, especially for a character that doesn't show up past this, just seeing that he doesn't really want to be a part of this, nor does Nicolas Cage to a certain degree and the whole island itself. They're just kind of there relaxing, chilling until the gunfire and earthquake. Christian Bale's character, he seems like a normal type of character. Once he goes to war, he doesn't respond to the letters. It turns out he is a illiterate. He cannot read or write this whole time. He seemed so charming at first and know what he was doing. He could sing, but it turns out the reason why he didn't respond to the letters is because he can't read or write. And so because Penelope is a educated person, she's like, okay, no, this is a, you know, she can't do it. She needs someone who can at least read or write, not like treat him like an idiot or anything, but you know, just be educated in some way. And she can't stay with a person that can't do that. And then tragedy hits the war and the gunfire starts on that island, which does suck for the island of the people because they're like smack in the middle of this war. Germans, they just came on that island to kill people or whatnot. The people of the island, they're just in the middle being like, well, this is our place, you know, go fight somewhere else. What's even more kind of messed up and tragic is after this, an earthquake happens. And so it's like people on this island cannot take a break. They've dealt with this whole war and gunfire stuff. And now like, I think a week later or something like that, I don't know the time frame. Seems like immediate, maybe not like a day, but a goddamn earthquake starts happening. But despite all of this, most of them survive. Not gonna lie though, I thought the father was gonna die when he was in his house and wouldn't wanna start falling down. I was like, God damn, she's lost two of the men that she loved and now her father, they can't do that, right? And luckily they don't. Nicholas Cage comes back to her and is like, hey, guess what? I'm back essentially so that she can have not only her father, but also the man that she loves. So Captain 
Corelli's Mandolin. This movie, while I was not expecting it to love it, and I don't love it, pretty good movie that's both a romance and war movie. Most of the film is romance, but with a sprinkle of war because of the soldiers and whatnot, it's a really good kind of love story while also having tragedy hit because at the time of, I think the 14th century, I think? I think it's that. I might be wrong on that, but either way, it is a well-told story about this woman wanting something more than just, you know, being a doctor or whatnot, wanting to be open to other people, but when she does, these people seem to go away from her and she never hears back from them, aside from Nicolas Cage, and also the effects of war and how this island was just smack in the middle of, you know, this war, while you have other characters like Nick Cage appreciating the community and the governor character, or not character, but the guy that plays the governor not willing to kill people because he just can't do it. So you just get kind of the different perspectives and motives of people having a love story involved in it. So in the end, it's a good movie. So unlike Mandolin, this movie is, I think, half of it. It's set in the visceral experience of war. You see Nicolas Cage and other characters in war, in battle, while trying to defend themselves, their soldiers, their comrades. And so because of that, you get PTSD from Nicolas Cage's character. You also get to see him losing hair on his left ear. And then you get like code talkers put by Adam Beach and his friend. His name is like a white horse, I think. They're not soldiers. They're there to help support their comrades and soldiers in beating whatever country that they're fighting. And so you also get to see how they deal with war, having to actually kill somebody on the battlefield so this one's much more visceral and just kind of in battle of like what war is like relatively the feeling of war is felt so most of the soldiers including nick cage they're not thrilled of having to babysit these cold talkers they're more annoyed but eventually through talking to them especially between nick cage and adam beach or you know they start to bond and they have you know similarities and i think music it ain't so bad you know having a babysit well maybe it is bad but you know as long as you like that person it's all good mark ruffalo shows up which i did not expect that one dude from the end of walking dead season one he shows up there are other characters but i really just don't care about them it's all about adam beach's character nick cage and white horse nick cage is told if one of these co people get captured just kill them because other countries are wanting to get information out of them in order to win the war and likewise that is hard for nick cage and the other soldiers just like when adam beach's character has to kill a human being for the first time it's a big deal because he's never killed anyone he's a happy family man before having to go out to war and so they dive into the psychology of having to actually kill another human being for the sake of war it's hard it's not easy especially if you don't want to do it you have to just be like okay you know this is my job nick cage has to kill one of them it's white horse he kills him that pisses off adam beach obviously but again likewise he had to kill another human being it was not easy it causes a fight they eventually get over it and so because it is much more of a war film unlike the previous film it does more into the whole not wanting to do stuff you have to like reluctantly kill a person and go to this war because you just have to and how it affects them adam beach's character and he is a nice person but he'll remember nick cage and these people in this event for the rest of his life but he may or may not have ptsd i'm assuming he is by the end of the film he goes back to his family but it's like you probably didn't want to see the shit that you had to see during the war but you just had to at some point and also the scope of this movie there's like shots of like a bunch of soldiers at war really like that if you're doing a war film might as well just show that just to show how big war was back in that day and then i think that's it that's all i had to say about this film there probably are other things again the other characters i don't really care for them nor are they as memorable as adam beach's character and nick cage just seeing their dynamic of you know at first they're kind of annoyed with each other or at least nick cage is like i had to defend this dumbass but eventually they bond over each other about music and whatnot have a friendship but at the back of nick cage's head he knows at some point he may have to kill this guy who he just befriended and it's not an easy choice at all so that aspect and relationship of the movie really works it's the best part about the film and just like the scope of things of like you know debris and war and bombs and gunfire and it got really loud as well i remember watching it with headphones and being like you know it's a really chill like moment and kind of scene and it it goes right into war it's a loud explosion like what the fuck there are meandering scenes of like the soldier just kind of playing games and playing card games i mean they are there just to have breathing time for the war that's about to happen but also as a film it does kind of feel meandering just okay i get it they're bonding over playing games and whatnot i get why it's there but i don't really want to see it either way this movie wind talkers is pretty good And then finally, USS Indianapolis, Men of Courage. This movie was boring as hell. Not gonna lie, I only remember the shark, the trials, and that's it. Everything else is just really, I do not care. I fell asleep at one point and had to go back 20 minutes, roughly, for like going back, but I had to. Just to watch like a love thing between this one soldier and this one girl. What else happens? Yeah, I don't know. So let me actually start with that. The whole love thing, it was like this soldier that's in love with his best friend's girl. By the end, he gets 
friends with her because his best friend dies and the sinking of the ship but this feels very tacked on and dragged on at first i didn't mind it but then eventually it just goes on and on and then once they get on the ship all the characters i don't really care for them they don't really give me a reason to they do give me a reason but even with reason it's like i don't care and apparently this is based off of a true story which i did not know based off of the end credits and i'm just gonna assume that it is because it shows actual footage the soldiers and men that suffered through this actual event sit there for like i think three or five days and having sharks all around them but this whole love thing i, I really i don't care about it's there whatever the whole shark stuff that was scary the movie somehow switched from a war movie to like a shark genre movie i felt like i was watching like version of jaws somehow the whole ship has sunk most of the soldiers have died some people are drinking salt water they're getting poisoned they're dying from that and then there's only a few left so they have to survive on this like little ass shaft boat or whatever waiting for help while sharks are around them and eating that was the one point in the film where i was like oh this is good this is interesting i like this seeing these soldiers freak the fuck out not being in battle but you know almost dying being abandoned and see it worked it was an effective point in the film just kind of wish it was the whole film once they survive some of them they go to a trial because james remar's character who's in this movie there was supposed to be like another ship or something there's like some conspiracy shit going on honestly don't care for that they go to trial this whole trial feels dragged out the movie is two hours long and it really should have been like an hour 30 minutes because i was just bored but after this whole trial they need someone to blink because all these soldiers are dead families are i guess mad cage is like oh i guess i have to be the one and by the end he actually kills himself he grabs his gun it wasn't his fault i mean it kind of was but it wasn't necessarily his fault government trying to cover shit up but despite all of this you know they've won the war so it doesn't really matter that i guess according to you know governments and higher ups it does the movie doesn't end there it shows like actual clips of what happened during that time so i like that i do like that this movie is commemorating what actually happened but as a movie it's just i don't know man i don't think it works it's boring i fell asleep which i never do and if i fall asleep during a film i don't know i just consider that a really sleepy boring film it's not a bad movie if you are a history buff and know your stuff about war or maybe know someone who's experienced this whatever happened in the film then it may resonate more with you but for me it's not that bad this movie overall it's an okay film and that was it for the war films of Nick Cage. Not gonna lie, I was expecting not to like these, especially the romance war movie, but no, that was probably my favorite out of these three films. Windarkers was good, but it kept cutting back to peace, not peace, but you know, just scenes with the soldiers hanging out, having a fun time, but for having to go out, seeing their own comrades die, the visceralness of it, I like that. But when it comes back and forth, I, I don't really care. USS Indianapolis, Men of Courage, whatever. Never gonna watch that film. But two of these films are good and I would have recommend people go watch them they are good and if you really care about the whole war films which is a war genre in general so it didn't really resonate with me but that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching